Hello, this brief video is going to describe the equipment that you need to digitize old reel-to-reel -reel audio recordings. Uh, my grandfather had audio as a hobby, and in the 1950s and the 1960s he made a lot of recordings. Much of them were music uh, from his turntable or from the radio, but a lot of what you see here are audio recordings of his family, my mother, his uh, daughter, my aunt, and uh, also uh, my grandmother, family recordings from the 50s and 60s. So the first thing you'll need if, you, if you're going to digitize some old open reel deck uh, recordings is an actual tape recorder. This is a Sony uh, TD560D. I purchased it very inexpensively on eBay. And the one caution about that is when you purchase an old piece of equipment uh, from someone you don't know, there's a good chance, uh, well, you don't, you're taking a risk. You don't know uh, whether the machinery is going to be in working order. And this deck works just fine. So I lucked out there. I didn't spend a lot on it anyway. I wanted to tell you about this setup because it took me a while to get things going. Uh, first of all, if, if you are going to be digitizing recordings, you're going to need one of these. This is an audio uh, tape splicing block or editing block and tapes break. Uh, they, they are old uh, and my tapes, these tapes of my grandfather's have been in storage for a long long time and wherever there was a splice it almost always breaks. So you're going to need to redo that with some splicing tape. I might make a video about how to do that and uh, you'll need a razor blade for that. I bought this uh, as a kit with some leader tape. Leader tape is the is the tape you put at the uh, beginning of the recording so that uh, you can get it in and out of the reels. A couple of other things that I found really helpful as tips is you'll need a pair of headphones uh, to monitor, but I also hooked up a pair of um, speakers, computer speakers, inexpensive ones with an amp built in. So I'm going to turn this up so you can hear. So they're listening. Very cool. Wow, that is so cool. There, that's the Ellington Blanton duet. That's really neat. I didn't know they listened to those things. These are some of my favorite recordings. I discovered them after, uh, I think, after my grandfather passed away. But anyway, that that's Duke Ellington and Jimmy Blanton. But at any rate, <laughs> sorry for the getting uh, distracted there. But the the reason for that is if you're off doing something in the in the room, which you probably will want to do if you're editing these tapes, it's helpful to have that audio source to know if it breaks to know if the tape breaks because then you can come and stop. Otherwise you'll have, you know, come back and the thing will have been broken for a long time. So the other piece of equipment that I have here that you can see is just a, a little mixer. Uh, I had this from my other music hobby. It makes it really easy. Uh, I won't go into deep detail, but this is a recording from 1955 and it is of course mono, not stereo. This is a stereo deck, which means all of the programming comes out on the left channel in this example and with the mixer I'm able to pan it to both channels and uh, manipulate the signal as it comes out of the deck before I digitize it. Now if you put it straight into your computer you could do that on the computer I just find it more uh, it's it's simpler for me to do it analog with this little mixer. The last thing I want to show you is this is a piece of equipment that my grandfather would have loved this is a Zoom H2. Um, it's going to be pretty old now. I don't know that they make the H2, but they make similar recorders. Uh, and it digitizes the source, so I don't have to have this hooked up to you know, the PC. Uh, I would not want to take this bulky reel-to-reel -reel deck up to where the computer is, and my laptop is not something I want to use for this. So. This machinery digitizes it, and the great thing is you can select the setting. Uh, right now I'm digitizing these as mono recordings because that's what they were recorded as in the 50s. And then I just take the little SD card out and can work with them on the computer after the fact. 
using software. So this is just a little up. Oh, and the other thing is, if you do get one of these old decks, you'll want to uh, download the owner's manual. Um, I, most of the um, most of the features of these uh, pieces of equipment are pretty intuitive, but um, it's good to have it. For example, I didn't know uh, how to stop and scrub the tape. There's a um, instant stop where you can stop it and move the reels back and forth to find an exact spot. Um, that's called scrubbing. It's really easy to do if you know how to do it, and it wasn't really clear on this machine. So that's an introduction to the equipment that you need to do this, and uh, a lot of great family memories from the 50s coming back. I can hear. Well, we gotta carry it over there so that I can have some.